Well, I want to go over something that's probably not found on YouTube. I don't know if I didn't really search, but possibly not. But uh, you might you might think of um, this as an ancient Nikola Tesla. He's a Greek philosopher, but maybe more of a scientist than a philosopher. Uh, he was actually at odds with Aristotle, too, and, and the philosophers of the day. He was actually the one that you consider today as the father of atomic theory. Now, they did not have any instruments to go by back at the time when during ancient Greece, but they actually had a theory that the smallest divisible uh, particle that all matter can be divided into was an atom, which was a theory that was held all the way up until, well, I guess uh, the atom bomb, but it was even being taught in school in the late 1940s in the United States. So it's uh, quite a big, big accomplishment. And this guy was a very humble type person. He lived to be, you know, in Wikipedia, it has it as 90 years old. He actually it was from 460 BC to 370 BC, but there's some that actually say he probably lived over 100 years old, but. It's a little bit sketchy on exactly what his lifespan was, but it was, you know, he lived to be quite a ripe old age. So, um, Democritus means chosen of the people, was an influential ancient Greek pre Socratic philosopher, primarily remembered today for the formulation of the atomic theory of the universe. You would not think somebody back in that time could have ever, ever, um, known something like this and actually i'm going to actually state something else that some things were actually known even during the greek and roman times and then they got lost in the middle ages and i don't know i guess they heavy religious influence or whatever happened i'm not sure but ex actually he was largely ignored in ancient athens uh he was nevertheless well known to his fe fellow uh, northern born philosopher aristotle because aristotle really and uh, Plato really disliked him, so um, they didn't like this guy. I don't know why, but you know maybe he was proposing something that they didn't understand. But but basically, the theory of Democritus and Leucippus, and actually this was like the theory's been around actually a little bit before Democritus, but he held that everything was comprised of atoms, which are physically but not geometrically individual. And that between the atoms, there lies empty space. Now, actually, I could tell you something here. If you took all the space between all the atoms and the whole visible universe, all the space that's even in between the atoms and the atoms in, that make up the molecules, and you took all that space, the whole visible universe would fit inside of a thimble, so they say. So actually, matter is energy, even though... But it's very high energy if you're talking about something like vandium steel or something. So, I mean, in a practical way, it's still matter, but it's actually energy real out in reality. But anyway, um, the atoms, he, he theorized that the atoms were not indestructible. And they always have been, always will be in motion. And that there was an infinite number of atoms and kinds of atoms which are different in shape and size. Now, that's interesting because... You know, when you're looking at the atomic theory today, um, we have the atomic weights of all the elements. And, like, this is a standard periodic chart that's, you know, in every textbook out in a school, right, that's in, uh, you know, that people learn in physics or chemistry or whatever. And you can see here is the element of silver and palladium, which are near very close to the same atomic weight. And then you have platinum and gold and ir iridium, and osmium and you know things well you know the precious metals are interestingly shown together pretty close but anyway um this actual theory of having different sizes and weights and shapes is astounding that some a greek philosopher and actually i guess you can call him the uh the the modern the ancient uh nikola tesla actually figured this out and he was not well liked and uh, if you want to look at what Aristotle said Aristotle said actually Aristotle and Plato they hated the Democritus atomic theory they wanted to have his books burned and everything and Aristotle's ideas of materials 
was that all material consisted of only four elements. So now if you're looking at it without a microscope, but you know this guy, he figured it out without a microscope. Um, Democritus was because he realized that things decayed, even stone decayed. And he says it had to be made up of some element that was even smaller than you could see. He just theorized that by seeing the decay of things. But anyway, he says there was, uh, Aristotle said that there was only four elements, water, air, fire, and earth. And, um, you know, actually, um, you know, it actually, you know, it's kind of, uh, you know, I can actually, I live on this. Actually, the Hopi Indians say that the four races of the earth, uh, the peoples, right? I don't know if they got this from Aristotle or what, but they say one is, um, has domain over the water, one has domain over the air, one has domain over fire, one has domain over earth. And actually, um, you know, I just had to live on this. It's unrelated to this, but I'll throw it as a point of interest. Actually, the Hopi Indians said this. It says the uh, the black race of people has domain over water. The, uh, the oriental or yellow race of people has domain over the wind and air. And the Caucasian or white race of people has dom- dominion over fire. And the red or Indian or American Indian or whatever... Um, uh, has dominion over the earth and the animals. So I don't know where they got that from because it's almost weird that it's like the four elements that are observed by Aristotle or even somewhat uh, in what Hopi Indians uh, described too. And so I guess it's probably an obvious thing when you look at it. But anyway, each of these elements, which means you know the water, air, fire, and earth, according to Aristotle, had two properties out of the following four, hot, cold, wet, or dry. So in other words, you can only have two of those properties. You can't have something hot and cold at the same time or wet and dry. But his, you know, you're looking at what Aristotle said uh, versus Democritus, his atomic theory. Aristotle was like uh, in kindergarten or first grade, and Democritus was, uh, you know, was a Ph.D., and I guess that's probably why they hated him. So, <laughs> but, you know, he's too smart. But anyway, you know, if you look at today, uh, here he is, you know, here's the periodic table. And, you know, it's 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 actually very much along the lines of what he said. And, you know, it's like he talked about, you know, the, you know he talked about there's uh, atoms and that the atoms are indestructible. I mean, maybe he got that wrong, but I guess they are indestructible. They can be destroyed, and it will release a lot of energy. But basically, they aren't. They pretty much are indestructible for the most part, and uh, they will always have been, and always been, will be in motion. You know, how did he figure that out? How did he figure that atoms are always in motion? And there's all kinds of atoms which are different in shape and size. And you know, when you think about that, he already predicted that there was going to be this periodic table of the elements. Now, how's that? How's that? Now, I actually want to state something else. You know, um, during the time of Rome, during the time of Rome, this famous Roman historian, Seneca, he actually knew that the earth was round. Now, it's unrelated to this story, but I just want to throw it in here. He actually knew that the earth was round. And then later on, you know, and this was this was like during the time of Jesus, right? He knew that the earth was round, and he knew that the earth was actually on a 23 and a half degree tilt. He knew this. I don't know how he knew it or what exactly, but he knew this because he wrote about it in, in books. He actually was an advocate of the hollow earth theory, so that was another one that was kind of interesting to tell. But, you know, later on, they all said it was the earth was flat and it came about, you know, you were a heretic if you said the earth was round and all this type of stuff. But it, it, it goes to show you that the ancients, especially when you're looking at this classic type cultures from the Greeks and Romans, especially probably the Greeks more so than the Romans. I think the Romans were more, um, you know, adept at law and, uh, you know, equalizing society a little bit better than it ever was up, up to that point until the United States came upon board. But uh, it looks like... Uh, you know, there's been a lot of things that were theorized 2,000 years ago that weren't figured out till maybe two or 300 years ago. 
And, uh, you know, along these lines, I also want to mention that, you know, the, uh, you know, some of the stuff about the Greeks theorized, you know, some of the stuff I put out in other videos about uh, vibrations and frequencies probably um, that can actually influence the human body. Well, when you think about it, all matter is actually frequency and vibrations. Well, you know, back in the day, they used to use like the singing and tonal bowls and things like that to influence the health of the person before they even knew about this high-tech electronic stuff. So, hey, you know, I just want to put this out here because so many ancients were had a hell of a lot more wisdom than, you know, the snobs in today and academia actually want to uh, uh, give them credit for because, um, you know, it's actually today, it's almost like they think, well, they didn't know nothing back then, but it seems like this person, Democritus, actually was thousands of years ahead of his time, and he was persecuted by his peers, even Aristotle and Plato. So I figured to put this out there, out here because I found this to be highly interesting because basically he's almost like an ancient Nikola Tesla. And uh, he was not actually vindicated till like 2,000 years later. Interesting in my point, point of view, for sure.